When I dive, I always take a camera with me. If I don't have my camera, I don't like to dive because that's the time where you're going to see the mermaid riding the dugong chasing the manta ray. My name's Gina Mascord and I'm fire manager for Gosford Hospital Central Coast Health. I have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of photos. RedMap is one of the ways that I can use those photos. So I started RedMap and it's a citizen science project that invites fishers and divers all around the country to send in photos of species that they think or know are unusual for a given location. We can see things are changing. It's wonderful to know that the marine scientists are interested in what we're seeing. We'll just go to um, Variety Bay, I think. Hopefully find something in the log. And then that can then be useful for the studies that they're doing. My name's Andrew Bain. I work in computer security, but I also do a lot of diving around Tasmania. I've been involved in RedMap since around 2009, which is very early on. I think my first uh, report was a uh, eastern rock lobster that we saw at Bichino. So as our environment changes, plants and animals on land and in the ocean are moving north in the northern hemisphere and south in the southern hemisphere. So it's really important that we actually understand what's changing, when and where and how. In the last 18 years, seeing the kelp forest disappear and seeing urchin barrens appear is heartbreaking. Uh, it's been the saddest part of, of diving. We were reliant on our oceans. So I'm quite concerned that if the rest of the oceans uh, have these things happening to them as well, that communities aren't going to be able to go out and catch fish, that reefs are going to die, and that's terrible. For plants and animals that are um, endemic to the Tasmanian coast, there's not a lot of options for them. So things like giant kelp, they're at their absolute limit for temperature tolerance, and they're disappearing from all along our coast, and of course, there's no coastal areas between the bottom of Tasmania and Antarctica. So I really hope to see a turtle out there today. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. If we don't, at least we can see a few of the target species from Red Map. How often do I dive? Yeah, nowhere near as much as I want to. Uh, if I didn't have to come up to change tanks, I would probably be down there for hours upon hours at a time. Here at Swansea Channel is one that I've, I've done this dive alone over a hundred times. So getting to know what species should be here and what species are new to the area, uh, it comes from that experience. So far as red map, we saw the black spot goatfish. We saw quite a few moon wrasse, Australian sawtail, and there was a few broken line wrasse. So fishers and divers can take a photo and they can send that in via the smartphone app or the website and that immediately gets sent to the expert in Australia for that species. Bryson and I have been friends for a few years now. We're just friends that go fishing sometimes. Find anything? I'm a third generation commercial fisherman. I love the water since I was a little kid. It's always fascinated me. You know, I make my livelihood from the ocean. So for me, it's important to know what's happening in the surrounding areas. Growing up on the water, I've seen huge changes. We're getting a lot of different fish species, so your kingfish, snapper. We've caught eastern rock lobster off the bottom of Tasmania. It's, it's concerning as well as interesting. So up until recently, I had absolutely no idea about red map. So can you see that fish? I reckon we should have a look at that and see if that's reportable for red map. Yeah, commercial fishermen uh, definitely should be looking at using red map. It's only going to, in the long run, help them out in understanding what's happening in the ocean. Around the world with a growing population, there'll be an escalating demand for seafood. So it's incredibly important that we're proactive about the management that we have in our marine systems to try and maximise what we can sustainably produce from those. My motivation to do citizen science is that's what I wanted to do. Because I didn't keep going with the idea of becoming a marine biologist. I'm an ordinary everyday person, but I'm pretty proud of the knowledge that I do have. Scientific monitoring is very expensive and it's impossible for Australia to have scientific diving teams all around our 30 or 40,000 uh, kilometres of coastline. But we've got almost 4 million recreational fishers, a heap of commercial divers. If we can harness just a small percentage of those observations, then how amazing is that? I had my very young son at only a couple of months old out in the boat with me as I was catching rock lobster. He, he needs to learn how to do that, but that can only happen if there's rock lobster there to catch. 
I want to be able to look my kids in the eye and say I did the best thing that I could at the time to try and help understand what's changing and tell people about it.